Welcome. Next Sunday's Growing Connections is celebrating women in our lives. I would like to ask Carol Wetzel to come forward and share more about that. Good morning. I'm on the Growing Connections team, and as we all know, next Sunday is Mother's Day. But we'd like to celebrate all the women that might have made something important in our lives. So during Cop Hour next week, we're going to have the opportunity to honor these women, whether it be mother, grandmother, a favorite aunt, a teacher, any woman that has really made a difference in your life, inspired you, just share their story. You know, let's honor these women. And if you want to bring a picture or a little memento or something, um, that would be great. So it'll be during coffee hour in the fellowship hall. So hope you all participate. And men, you can honor the women in your life too. It doesn't just have to be women honoring women. On Wednesday, the men's breakfast takes place 8 a.m. at Pump and Pantry and women in faith are meeting here at 5 p.m. for a time of fellowship. I would like to ask Sue Baker to come forward to share information on the Pentecost offering and paper drive. Good morning. Pentecost Sunday is the birthday of the church, the time when we celebrate God's gift of the Holy Spirit. This year, as we did last year, we are offering two ways to make a special Pentecost offering. The first is uh, financial gifts. All the money we receive will be used for supplies for Head Start and our own young people. What a wonderful way to support our church's ministry to the next generation. Please leave your gift in the offering plate, send it to the church office, or send it electronically. But be sure to mark your gift Pentecost offering. And the second way is we are receiving um, a Pentecost paper offering. Our church goes through a lot of paper and paperish supplies. And there's a list of the items needed at the Welcome Center out in the narthex, and it's on a half sheet of paper just like this. Um, beginning next Sunday, May 14th, please leave your gift in front of the communion table here in the sanctuary, and we will bless all the gifts received on Pentecost Sunday, which is May 28th. And one other item that I would like to share with you is a thank you letter that our church received from Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Sleep in Heavenly Peace Fond du Lac was one of the organizations supported in the 2022 Alternative Gift Fair. The letter let us know that our gifts of $1,525 got six kids off the floor. So I thank you so much for your generosity. I would like to ask Alicia Lawson to come forward to tell us about input needed from you for our May 28th worship service. Good morning. Do you have a favorite hymn, worship song, or Sunday school song? The worship team wants to hear from you. On May 28th, we will be celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit as we remember and sing our favorite church songs. A song, request, a song request basket and slips will be available in the narthex today, May 7th and May 14th. Please fill out a song request slip and drop it into the basket. We ask that you include the name of your favorite song as well as your name and phone number in case we have any questions identifying the song. Join us at the May 28th worship service where we will sing as many songs as reasonable. We look forward to seeing you there. Today's Growing Connections topic, the historical Jesus has been postponed to allow us all time to celebrate with our compliments. I would like to ask Mary Ellen McKean to come forward and tell us about an upcoming discussion on the historical Jesus. Okay. 
Well, thanks to funds from the Roy Johnson Memorial, our church was able to purchase five videos from the Great Courses, which is a catalog-based video learning opportunity with 800 courses featuring expert professors from many universities, and each lecture is 30 minutes long. The Growing Connections team had scheduled one lecture today from the Historical Jesus course, but we decided to delay it for a while because we have such a wonderful confirmation celebration and so many things to do today that we'll look forward to this at a later date. Dr. Bart Erdman is our presenter. He has a bachelor's degree from Wheaton College and a master's and PhD, a magna cum laude. And when I first uh, typed that in, I said mango cum laude, but fortunately I noticed it. But that is from um, Princeton University. He currently teaches at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and his specialty is Christianity in the Greco-Roman environment. Wow. Right now, we will see part of one of his videos, which will give you some idea of how Dr. Ehrman lectures as a historian on the topic. In the last lecture, we began to see why some scholars have questioned the historical accuracy of the New Testament Gospels. These Gospels were anonymous works written decades after Jesus' life. And the later Gospels appear to portray him along the lines of a divine being, like Apollonius of Tiana, or others of those in the ancient world who were thought to be divinely born and divinely empowered to do miracles. At the end of the lecture, I asked whether it's possible that the later Gospels represent modifications of Jesus as he really was, whether Christians in later times, including the authors of the Gospels, began to see him as in some sense divine, whereas in the earlier periods, including during Jesus' own life, he was not seen that way. Let me stress once again that I'm not talking about the importance of the Gospels for issues of faith, only about their importance for knowing what Jesus himself was really like. Whether what he was really like should affect what you believe about him is a different question, one that various theologians and biblical scholars answer differently. At this stage, though, I'm more interested in the prior question, not what to believe about Jesus, but how to know what he actually said and did. The obvious place to start is with a fuller understanding of our earliest sources for knowing about Jesus, the Gospels of the New Testament. In this lecture, we'll consider these books in general terms. What kind of documents are they? Historically accurate biographies, fairy tales, written accounts of early Christian legends and myths, something else? To proceed, I'd like to give a very brief history of scholarship on this question of what the Gospels are. In doing so, I'll discuss three different ways of thinking about the Gospels. The three primary understanding of Jesus that he just mentioned will be the following. The first one is the time of the ancients the supernatural miraculous events. The second, the Enlightenment scholars of the 18th century who highlighted natural laws, cause and effect, and of course, modern times, where, quote, things that may be true didn't happen, that stories told in historical ways reflect, quote, religious spiritual truths. We hope that you will consider joining us for this learning opportunity coming soon. Thank you. This morning, we welcome Reverend Daniel Schultz. Reverend Schultz is a minister in the United Church of Christ. A former pastor, he currently serves as the Wisconsin Council of Churches Community Health Program Director. He lives in, with his family in Fanac. Welcome, Reverend Schultz.
Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call of worship. Listen to the call of the birds. Hear them greet the morning. Singing songs of praise. Hail the warmth of the sun. The blessings of a loving God. The gift of life. Sense the wonder of springtime. All around us and within us. And our voices are lifted in praise.
please join me in the call to confession. God of new life, we are not blind to the glory of our creation. We are thankful that the frozen ground is thawing and breaking up, yielding the color of grass and fresh flowers. We are delighted to hear the birds singing again and to see buds forming on the trees. God of new life, too often we take the created world for granted. We have assumed that these blessings are gifts only to be received rather than nurtured and cultivated. We have politicized the issue of creation, global warming, acid rain, the pollution of our air, and the condition of our forests are regarded as political rather than theological issues. God of new life, help us to abandon politics and act as good stewards of the treasures you have entrusted to us and our children. Amen. Please take a moment for your own silent and personal confession. The transforming love and power of God seen in the unexpected surprises of Christmas and Easter are available to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's take a, oh, the peace of Christ be with you. Let's take a moment and share the peace of God with one of us. Our Old Testament lesson is Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he forgive his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. My first New Testament lesson comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My second one comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, 
one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all of his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat. He said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went out and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do that to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We would like to invite our youngest disciples to come forward for our children's talk. Just look at all those pencils. There are short pencils, long pencils, skinny pencils, and thick pencils. There are many different shapes, sizes, and colors of pencils, but there is one thing all of those pencils have in common. The eraser is worn off of every single one of them. You know what this means? This means I make a lot of mistakes. Do any of you make mistakes? When I make a mistake, I erase it and start over and over again until I get it. These pencils remind me of people. People come in all different sizes, shapes, and colors too. But we all have one thing in common. We all make mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes. That is why God sent Jesus to die on the cross, to erase our mistakes. When we do something wrong, we can ask God to forgive us. And because of Jesus, he will erase our mistakes and we can start over again and again and again. Unlike these pencils, God's eraser never wears out. Just as God forgives us over and over again, Jesus taught us that we should forgive other people over and over again. One day, one of the disciples asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone who sins against me? Should I forgive him seven times? He was probably pretty proud of himself for being willing to forgive someone seven times. Jesus answered, not seven times, but 70 times seven times. I think Jesus knew that if he said we should forgive 70 times seven times, we would never be able to keep count and we would forgive over and over again, just as he forgives us. It doesn't matter what we look like. We all need God's forgiveness. We also need to remember that Jesus taught that we are to forgive others just as God forgives us. After our prayer, we have something to give you to remember our talk today. Let's get ready to pray. Dear God, we all make mistakes. Thank you for sending Jesus to forgive us of our sins. Help us to forgive others the same way, over and over again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have pencils for each of you today. Look, each pencil has a perfect eraser. It says, Jesus loves me. <laughs> Remember, we all make mistakes, but Jesus loves you and forgives you and will help
Max Lucuto is a minister at a church in San Antonio, Texas, and he's wrote over 100 books, including Just Like Jesus, In the Grip of Grace, and When God Whispers Your Name. He's said that if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. Face it, friend, he is crazy about you. And a relevant thing to ask could be, what did I do to earn this love? Did I donate my whole bank balance to charity? Not likely for most of us. Do I perfectly follow the commandments? Am I perfectly kind to every person I meet? Have I sacrificed myself for someone I loved? Nope, no, hardly, and no again. So why does God love us so? Grace. Grace is God's love. From the day we're born until the day we die, we have God's grace. It's like a little sibling who follows you around. They love you and any mistake you make, they don't see, they forget what they think is great. Wow, this sibling is amazing, right? What do you do to earn this love? Grace is a gift given from the day you were born for forever. It's the great pillow underneath the great rock wall of life. You climb up and sometimes it's really hard and you just can't reach that next handhold or the going just gets too tough and you fall. But you can never truly hit rock bottom. God's grace is always there to cushion our falls. It sounds great to have this divine pillow, doesn't it? What do we do to earn this love? Well, it's really simple and you don't have to do a thing. Jesus died for you. He gave himself to give us God's grace. Jesus is the reason that we are forgiven for our sins and that we are protected from everything. Jesus is the one who put you on God's refrigerator and in his wallet. He is the only reason God follows us around. Jesus is the one who set that pillow underneath that great climb that is your life. It's important to remember that even though Jesus didn't have to do this, he chose to. He lived the perfect life God demands of each of us and took what should have been our punishment. God accepted that sacrifice, raising Jesus from the dead so we can have eternal life. When Jesus returned, he didn't regret his choice. He, did, he didn't tell the disciples how to pay him back. He taught them how to live the way God wants us to live, to love others as Jesus and God love us. Wow, all this is spectacular, right? Being the Christians that we are, it wouldn't be right to just take this from God. So there's something we can do. Be like Jesus. Be a little bit more forgiving and a little kinder to everyone. He wants us to strive to extend the same grace God shows us.
Lots of times we have probably been mad at someone and we don't always want to forgive them, even though that we know that it is the right thing to do. Even though that they have done something to us, it could have been a big thing or a little thing, but forgiving someone is always the right thing to do. God has told us in the Bible that whatever we have done, he will always forgive us. And it does not matter if it was a big thing or a small thing, he will all still forgive us. And God will always forgive us and love us till the end. One example is in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 22. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, How many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. In this verse, it means that Jesus was telling Peter that we should forgive his brother limitless numbers of times. Another example comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32, when it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. In this passage, it means that we should be compassionate to everyone and forgive them when we can. One more example comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 37. Do not be judged, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. In this passage, it means treat people how you want to be treated, and if you forgive them, they will forgive you back too. All three of these passages proves to us that God forgives everyone and that he thinks we should too. Look around and see God's creation. It is everything from a grain of sand to the people all around you right now. God is the one and only creator, and he will never stop creating. He creates little miracles every day, acing a test, making new relationships, and even going home with food and a bed tonight are just a few of all the little miracles God creates every day. A passage you have probably heard of is Genesis 1, verse 3. It reads, Then God said, Let there be light and there was light. This is one of the most important readings to prove God's creation, as it is God creating light on earth, and with that, a miracle on earth. The creation of light was so important because it demonstrated God's importance, power, and absolute control. When you think of God's creation, you may think of your house, just to name one thing, but it is so much greater than you could understand. God created the entire universe and everything in it, this is demonstrated in Genesis 1, verse 31. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. This proves that God believes everything he, is, he has made is good, and therefore we can know that all he has made is good. We should put this in the back of our minds as we go through life, because when we feel down, it's good to have a little insurance to get us through life a little or a large bit easier. God may have created us good, but he also gave us the gift of free will. We sometimes choose to do bad things and we cannot blame God for that. We have to acknowledge that and use that to better improve ourselves. Whether it be coming to church every Sunday or just simply praying when you need to, this can go a long way to improving ourselves. God made us susceptible to change. We cannot fall into bad habits, but we must work hard to be in God's image. We are God's creation, so we have to accept that and be a good creation. We must shun ostentation and all around remember our roots. Oftentimes I look down, look around and see people trying to be the best in other people's eyes. When we should really live as God wants us to. God is the creator of heaven, earth, and the universe. His power is so great, it is hard to understand. But the one thing we can all remember is to live in his image. Grace is God's forgiveness. We did nothing to earn it, and we do not deserve it. Now we can take this two ways. We can think, oh well, I'm Im immune to everything and live the way God wants us to. Or we can do the best to live in God's image and be a little better to everyone and a little more empathetic to the next person. We must strive for greatness and protect the rest of God's creation. We must do all that we can to, pro to protect all God has given us, everything and each other.
It has been a genuine honor and privilege to work with this confirmation class and their faith partners this year. Right now, I'd like to present the confirmation class of 2023. Please come forward as I say your name. Graham Anderson and his faith partner, Mary Bacon. Claire Bratz and her faith partner, Sue Baker. Eddie Hayes and his faith partner, Dan Baker. Nicia Peterman and her faith partner, Dave, excuse me, Nancy Hilbert. Sam Plachek and his faith partner, Dave Erickson. Braden Tradick and his faith partner, John Neville. Rowan Willey and his faith partner, Mike Warnches. And now I'd like to ask Eddie Hayes to come forward and lead us in this class statement of faith. We believe in the Trinity, God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is the creator of all things on heaven and earth. We believe that God is continuing to create, and we are called to care for all of creation. We believe that Jesus came to this earth, both fully human and fully God, to teach us to love and to care for each other. We believe that death is not the end. We believe that Jesus, the Son of God, died for our sins so that we may have eternal life. We believe that God created us with free will. We are called to live in humility, share God's love, and spread the, God's word. We know that we fall short and miss the mark each day. We make mistakes and know that God's grace through the love of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. We believe that we are inspired by that grace to love and forgive others. We believe that prayer is our key to communicating with God. We believe that we can talk to God through prayer anytime and anywhere. When we pray, we talk and listen to God. We believe that God created us to be in community together, to learn and grow in faith with one another and God. In becoming members of this church, we commit ourselves to continuing to learn and grow in faith and understanding because learning never stops. Before we get to the questions and the confirmation itself, I wanted to say uh, two quick words, okay? I'm the pastor, I gotta do that, right? One is, didn't these guys do a wonderful job this morning? I think you preachers did about as good a job as I did when I was starting out. So, you know, you might be competition for me in a couple of years here. And hasn't Jennifer done a wonderful job? <laughs> putting this together and leading this class to a confirmation. Now, the other thing I wanted to say was uh, I was thinking about my role in all of this. You know, here I am doing confirmation. And I didn't meet the confirmands until yesterday morning, right? So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I trust Jennifer put them through a good process, but I don't know. I don't know what you guys actually believe or not. And so I, I was thinking, this is kind of awkward that I don't know this. And then I realized that even though we talk about belief in God and Jesus and the, and the Spirit and the Trinity and all of that. It's not really about that. And even though it may feel like a graduation to you confirmants, and even though it may feel to you out in the congregation like these kids are promising to be members of First Presbyterian 
of Fond du Lac forever and ever, it's not about that either. What we're doing this morning is more like a marriage than anything. Because when we get married, there's no way for a pastor to know if you're sincere about that relationship or not. I think my rate of, mar of uh, successful marriage is right around 50-50. I hope I, I do better with you guys. The only people who can know what you truly believe are you yourselves. And the thing to remember about that is that with a marriage, as with, uh, as with a, a confirmation, it's your promises that matter as well. And the only promise that matters is to love. You all are promising to love this congregation as best you can from here in. You're also promising to trust in their love for you. And the congregation, you are promising to love these confirmands as best you are able from now on to trust in their love for you. So with all that said, are we ready? Give me a thumbs up. All right. Let me ask the confirmands then. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Do you trust in him? Do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Members of the congregation and receiving these new members, do you promise before God to give your love and your encouragement, diligently striving to incorporate them in the life of this congregation, that they may grow in Christian life and commitment. You yeah. do. Let's pray together. Loving God, we praise you for calling us to be one people, united in Christ and knit together by your spirit. We count it all joy that you have chosen to be our family by calling these sisters and brothers to a common faith. Lord, establish them in your truth. God, them by your spirit, that together with all your people, they might grow in faith, hope, and love, and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. With you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. Amen.
Oh, they're going to kneel. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll find your spot. Okay. This, is, this isn't in the script, but if anyone, if your family or anyone from the congregation wants to come forward and lay a hand on a confirmand or their prayer partner, you may. Watch out, confirmands. This is what we do at an ordination, so <laughs> watch out. Great and loving God, you have given your scriptures that we may know your ways and walk in them. You have given your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we may know of your love and walk in it. And you have given us the Holy Spirit to guide us on your path and to help us grow and become who we are meant to be. Send now your Holy Spirit among, upon these confirmands. Fill them. Give them the energy and the insight and the love that they need to continue as Christians. From now forevermore. Amen. All right. Stand up and let us welcome our confirmation class of 2023. They will, uh, they're going to have a receiving line after worship, and um, I would encourage you to embarrass them a little bit with your love. Twenty-nine cents, a quarter and four pennies, two dimes, a nickel, and four pennies. Mary, have you ever been able to get a meal for twenty-nine cents? No, you can't even buy one stamp for that price. Well, that's how much it costs to provide one meal to a hungry child. On Saturday, April first, Mary and I participated in the Fond du Lac Feed My Seven Children mobile pack. This year, with generous support from Fond du Lac area churches and the community. We raised more than $38,800 to feed God's starving children. We packed 132,900 meals for those in need. That is enough meals to feed 362 children for an entire year. Every child has a right to be fed a nutritious meal. Jesus has called us to feed the hungry and serve those in need. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. I felt really blessed to be part of this team of awesome people who gave up a few hours of their time on a weekend to help others. It was truly a remarkable experience to work together with my faith partner to create meals for children in need. We hope you are enjoying this video highlighting this year's pack. Let us give of our offerings to God. <laughs>
Wonderful God, amazing God, God our Father and our Mother, we give you thanks for the gift of youth and children, and thanks for the gift of our community and all that it does in the world. Bless us all today and send us forth as your people. We offer our gifts to you today and ourselves with them. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is our duty and our joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, creator and sustainer of the universe. We give you thanks for sun and clouds, for rain and snow for phases of the moon, for stars at night, and plants in their courses. All you make is very good. For the universe we praise you. We worship and adore you. We give you thanks for our creation and our calling, for friendship and community, for love and laughter, for tears and pain of growth. For your gift of life, we praise you, we worship and adore you. We give you thanks with those who went before us, with saints and martyrs, evangelists and prophets, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, from every culture, land and tongue. We praise you, giving voice to every creature as we join the never-ending hymn.
Blessed are you, most holy, in Jesus Christ, who came among us, a servant and a friend, to reconcile us to yourself. We thank you for that life of love, the good news of your reign, and the promise of a banquet where all your children shall be free. For your gift of Christ, we praise you. We worship you and adore you. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. The new life in Christ, we praise you. We worship and adore you. Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work, and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ, and give us your peace. For the peace of Christ, we praise you. We worship and adore you. Through Christ, our Redeemer, in the power of the Spirit, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and forever, now and forever. Amen. Let us take a moment to pray for the needs of this community and the world. God of love, God of graciousness, we ask first and again your prayers for our confirmands this morning. Protect them from every evil, and help them to grow in your love and in your faith. And we pray for the members of our community, for Lynn Kay, who is battling cancer, for Don V, recovering from open heart surgery, for Lynn M, that her recovery may continue. And we pray for the needs of our city and our county, Fond du Lac, that it may know peace and that it may be preserved from violence, accident, and silliness. We pray for the state of Wisconsin and our nation, that it may be reconciled to itself that it may know of your love in everything that it does. We pray at last for the world torn by war, starvation, and disease. Heal our planet, O oh God, and us with it. We ask these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'm sorry, I should have told you that a while back. First Presbyterian practices an open table. If you are a guest with us this morning, you are very welcome to share in communion with us. And if you don't have your communion set, just uh, raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring one out. Not seeing anyone. So let us take the bread, the bread of life, the gift of salvation, taken here. and the cup, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take and drink. We give you thanks, O God, for your gifts, chief among them, your Son. Help us to be your people, strengthened at this table and brought near to one another. Amen. God, our Father, show you all of his grace. Christ, our brother, show you the forgiveness of God, and the Holy Spirit guide you into nature, today and forever. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you and remain with you now and always. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
ですね。